When we first started, the crazy thing is that I had no idea how to make ice cream. In fact, I, uh, I w had never been in, worked in a kitchen before, which um, when we, you know, like at the very, very beginning, that was daunting and it was terrifying. But in reality, I think as our company started to grow and become something more, um, more than just like this food cart on the side of a street, kind of started realizing that that was my number one weapon. Uh, not knowing what I was doing was oddly enough like the most exciting and thrilling thing. And uh, you know, we started this uh, philosophy, we change our menu every four weeks, which if you talk to anyone in a restaurant, they're gonna say that's in incredibly insane. Because you know, you have to plan every four weeks and you have to retrain everyone completely. And it's just like constantly, as soon as you learn something, as soon as the cooks learn how to make it, as soon as uh, you know, our marketing team, which is just me, you know, learns how to like talk about it, as soon as our servers learn how to serve it, uh, we throw it away and we, I almost equate it to sand art, we just, it just disappears. And we rotate, rotate new flavors in. Uh, but that didn't come naturally. Honestly, the reason that came was because uh, when I first started making ice cream, I actually had to reach out and find, get help from people around me. Uh, this, we started this kind of like collaboration network, this idea that we can work with uh, hundreds of different people and almost more so use our ice cream as a, almost as a soapbox to tell stories from. And when people come into our shops, they can learn about what's going on in their neighborhood. They can learn about the local cheesemakers or charcuteries or breweries or whatever you want. We can, we can provide that to you in one scoop of ice cream. And ice cream is fun. First of all, it's always fun. And second of all, it's one of the only things, restaurant formats, where you actually get to sample all you want. I mean, I don't know if you can imagine like going to one of the fanciest, you know, Ava Jeans and asking just for a spoonful of the bone marrow dish. But we can provide that. And so being able to provide those experiences has been incredible. Now, when we were first started, I think uh, I kind of equate everything to a story that I call the case of the missing caramel. Uh, and this just is testament to how little I knew about making ice cream when we first started. Uh, basically, I had this like vision, and it was the very first flavor I ever created. It was called sea salt with caramel ribbons. And I had this dream that we'd have a salted a sea salt ice cream, just salt, because the salt would make, bring up the dairy flavors, and you could taste the really beautiful organ cream. And then I'd hand burn caramel, and I'd ribbon in this caramel, and it was really cool. This was a test of, uh, of us making it, and then I, devised, I actually devised a way to ribbon in the caramel, and um, it's all in the wrist, you know? And you just kind of carefully swirl it in. Um, but, so it, I loved it. It was, honestly, this is a, when you're swirling caramel, it's like you go into a fourth dimension, and it just, it, you actually like hallucinate yourself. Um, and so it, I, you can wrap your mind around that. Um, it's beautiful. And the first time I made it, I was so thrilled. And I, like, I couldn't sleep all night. I actually like, woke up early and ran to, we, had a, we were renting space in a kitchen, uh, ran to the kitchen, opened up the bucket, and um, it was devastating. All the caramel was gone, literally gone. Like, it was, I knew for a fact I swirled it in perfectly, and it was just gone. And so I, um, I like remade it, and I was like, okay, this is just a fluke, and remade it. The next day, still gone. And so I remade it, and then I actually had this theory, maybe like if I spin the bucket every hour um, as it was freezing, because it takes like 10 hours to freeze, I was thinking maybe if I spin the bucket, like it's, uh, it'll hold, it's gonna like, just like an hourglass itself into place and just stay there. Um, and it still failed. I literally, I was like up all night with my, uh, with my alarm, just like every hour going into the freezer, flipping it in, in the freezer and flipping it. And then um, I actually, I, was, I would met with some Oregon State University food scientists and they were like, okay, well maybe the salt and the ice cream is like doing this. And they had no idea what, what, what was happening. Um, but the beauty of it was actually uh, one of, uh, today one of my good friends, his name is David Briggs. He owns a chocolate company called David, Chocolatel de David. Um, and for some reason, Every, t every night after work, he went way out of his way. He drove into the kitchen that I was working at, and he'd just hang out with me for like two hours every single night. And I have no idea why. Honestly, it's, um, it, it's both an honor and it, it seems silly. Like I have, you know, like that he would just come and hang out and we'd talk about everything. We'd talk about um, how to properly temper chocolate, about like the thousand different 
invert sugars and how you can invert your own sugar, which is a whole nother like wormhole. Um, and we, we started talking about caramel and we spent days and days talking about caramel and honestly, within a second, he knew exactly the problem. Um, as it turns out, you know, I wasn't cooking the caramel in this right, like there's 10 different methods to cook caramel and if you cook it this one way uh, that I was doing it, it melds into the cream. And so I was actually making caramel cream. And uh, it seems crazy, it, you know, he knew just instantly. And I got to feed off of that energy and feed off of that, uh, you know, that just deep knowledge. And it, it's not that intriguing of a flavor. It's one of my favorites, but it's just a salted caramel ice cream. But he knew exactly how to take it up another step, really make it 10 times better. Um, honestly, from there, we've gone on. I actually, him and I, we've devised different ways to make, uh, we've taken bacon and we've put it in the caramel. Uh, <clears throat> I've actually made caramel for beers now, and so I make like a salted caramel stout with a brewery in town. Um, made a thousand different caramels, but the fact is that learning this foundation was probably the number one thing. And the reason I, I think this is such an important story uh, to how, we, how we've built Salt and Straw, because I think it's a, it goes back to the saying that one, uh, one of my teachers used to always say, and it took me forever to figure out what she meant. She said, uh, you're do like stop thinking so hard. You you have to stand on the shoulder of titans, and it, I really didn't understand what that meant until very recently, kind of looking back, like how we've built this company. I'm not out there to be the smartest person in the room. And in fact, in most cases, I am not. And even when I'm alone in a room, <laughs> but the fact is, nor am I the the most creative at all. Um, but I've surrounded myself with people and I've actually used my craft, so ice cream at Salt and Straw, almost as a medium to showcase other people's creativity. And I think that's, you know, being, having that ability to kind of step back, learn from people, and just like accept their, you know, what makes them amazing, I think, is what really has kind of driven me and driven our company forward. Um, I think, uh, if I'm going to sum it all up, uh, I think if, you, if that one saying can stick with you, standing on the shoulder of titans, it means to me being humble, like being able to step back and know that you're not the best. Uh, and in fact, like embrace that because there's so many smart people around you. And the more every single day I surround myself with smarter and smarter people, and it makes me better. Um, be willing to listen. Like I've taken ice cream, and when I wanted to make a chocolate ice cream, I didn't just like assume that I knew anything about chocolate. I got to sit and be in a, with a chocolatier for 20, or you know, for hours and hours making chocolate. And this guy, literally, for the past 10 years, has worked with chocolate 24-7, 365 days a year. Of course he knows more than I do. Be, like, take that in, accept it, and enjoy it, and learn from that. Um, and I guess, like, you know, the number one thing that, on top of all of that, is like, Keep trying and trying and be willing to fail a thousand times and be willing to look for other people's advice. That's all I got. Um, but wait, there's more. Uh, one more thing. Um, we actually, uh, on that same note, uh, I was hoping to tap into your guys' creativity and we're gonna, uh, we've got kind of like what we're calling an ice cream creation challenge. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite ways to like, it's almost like crowdsourcing ideas. Um, and we get some really cool ideas from it. And sometimes I've actually not made them and then stolen their ideas. So if that happens to you, I'm sorry in advance. Um, but I think what we're gonna do, uh, we've got like a little booth outside where hopefully you can submit some ideas. Uh, I think we we're gonna talk, we we're kind of talking about maybe the winner. What we do is I'd go back into my R&D kitchen and we'd make your flavor and um, send a case of pints to your house. So it might be kind of fun. Um, yeah, that's all. Thank you.